What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the DC Collectibles Doomsday Clock 2-pack Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias. Here we do have Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias in the packaging. So what we're going to do now is take a little break, get these two open up, and then we'll have a better look at the figures inside. So sit tight everyone. And so here we have Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias posing out of the packaging. Now, unfortunately, neither of these guys come with any accessories. No alternate hands, no alternate heads, no nothing. We don't even get the little cat for Ozymandias. It is a little bit of a shame seeing as how these are. This is a $50 set, but what are you going to do? At least they look really nice together. So with that out of the way, let's actually have a look at Dr. Manhattan first. And so here we have a better look at Dr. Manhattan, and I actually love the detailing that they did on him. He's such a really basic figure, but they found ways to actually put details on Dr. Manhattan here. For example, the little hydrogen logo emblem right on his forehead, it is actually sculpted. It's not painted on like you would expect. There's actually some texture in there. The face is actually well done. I love his expression. It really does scream out Dr. Manhattan. He really doesn't show much emotion and they capture it perfectly with this face sculpt so I do like that. The eyes are also another good spot on this figure. They did paint them almost a silver color. I don't know how well that's coming out here on camera but they do have a hint of silver behind them and of course he has the black triangles underneath his eyes so that's really nice. I do like that. As far as his body goes, he really doesn't wear clothes. Um, he's just all blue with the exception of the his bottoms here, which is quite accurate to the Doomsday Comics so, or Doomsday Clock Comics, so there is that. He's just mainly blue. There's no added wash effects in him. There's no extra detailing. I do like that this one hand, which is his left hand, is actually sculpted. So he's actually pointing, you can actually have have it like the rebirth and rebirth style where he you only see his him pointing. I don't know, I always thought that was really, really nice. Again, no real detailing to speak of. However, they did give him new feet. His feet are actually sculpted so you can see even the toenails are sculpted on each individual toe. That's a detail that they didn't have to put in there. So, a really basic figure here with Dr. Manhattan. There's really not much to say about him. So, we're actually going to move on to Ozymandias. And so, here we have a better look at the Ozymandias figure. And I have to say, between the two, I think he's my favorite of the set. Mainly because there's a lot of detailing on him that Dr. Manhattan is actually lacking. For example, we actually do get a really nice head sculpt with Ozymandias here. It's has that really well-defined chiseled chin that he has in the comics. He's sporting his blonde hair, which is pretty accurate. There's some a little bit of wash in there, which I do appreciate that. He has a gold headband, and that's done really well. It's not as messy as it could have been. It could have been far worse, but they did a really good job painting that headband. Eyes are really nice. The vibrant blue... I think the only thing I don't like are his eyebrows. Like, maybe they're too light. Uh, they're coming off really light on camera. And even in person, they're relatively light. I would have preferred a darker shade of eyebrows. But that's just me. Moving on to his costume now. He does have a rubber overlay. This is actually a separate piece. You can see he does have some articulation right here, which we'll go over that when we talk about his articulation. But as far as... Ozymandias goes, like I said, he has this rubber overlay which looks really nice. Uh, it is sculpted almost symmetrically, so I don't know how accurate that is in the comics or in real life, but it is symmetrical. He is sporting a purple cape, and it's the exact same color as his outfit, so I do appreciate that. He does have a collar here. You can see the Egyptian Eye of Horus. And then he has these really nice, vibrant gold sleeves, and the cuffs are actually well sculpted. He is sporting two fist hands, so 
you're not going to have him pose holding anything, but yeah, two fists, so even if they gave him accessories, he wouldn't be able to hold them. Loving the detail on the belt. You can see it is sculpted right here, if the camera will focus. Love the little disc there. No detailing on the back of the belt, but we do get his little tassel or loincloth right here, which is soft, or not soft goods, but softer plastic, so I do appreciate that. We have that same gold plastic that we saw right here on his arms going throughout his legs. A little bit of an ugly joint here with the shin split, but I'm okay with that. He does have the cuffs right before his purple boots, and you can see he is sporting really nice purple fancy boots. I don't know though if you want to call them boots, but I'm calling them boots. But overall, between the two of them, I think Ozymandias here is my favorite when it comes to detailing. Now, when it comes to articulation, he does have a little bit of a hindrance, and we'll get onto that right after we compare them to other figures you may have in your collection. And here we have Dr. Manhattan posed next to a DC Universe Classic Superman and a Marvel Legends Cyclops. Here we have Dr. Manhattan posed next to a DC Essentials Batman and movie Ozymandias. Unfortunately, I do not have a movie Dr. Manhattan to compare him to, but this is a relatively good size. Here we have Ozymandias posed next to a DC Universe Classic Superman and a Marvel Legends Cyclops. Here we have Ozymandias posed next to a DC Essentials Batman and a DC Direct Movie Ozymandias. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually move on to their articulation. Now they do sport the exact same articulation, however, Ozymandias here does have some limitations. For example, his shoulders aren't going to go as high or do a full 360 because of this overlay. His ab crunch is really hindered, and on mine, he has really weak ankles, and it makes it really hard for him to stand. So we're going to have a look at their articulation with Dr. Manhattan. Both of them do have a ball joint in the neck. They can look, both look up and down, tilt their heads really slightly. They both do look left and right, so no issues there. Although on mine, Dr. Manhattan's neck, you can see it is giving me some resistance there. I might have to heat that up. Both of them do have a hinge in the neck, which lets them both look up and down. They both do have arms on ball joints. Dr. Manhattan goes all the way out. Ozymandias is hindered. Dr. Manhattan does do a full 360 where Ozymandias is unable to. They both have bicep swivel, double bend in the elbow. They both have a hinge in the wrist as well as swivel. Dr. Manhattan does have a working ab crunch which goes back and forward about there. Ozymandias, you're not going to get any ab crunch because of his little overlay here. They both do swivel at the waist. Legs do go forward to about there, they go back and out, and that's another stiff joint. I might have to loosen that up because I really don't like forcing joints. Uh, he does have a thigh swivel, there we go, thigh swivel, and that's the same for both of them. Both of them have double jointed knees, although Dr. Manhattan's knees here are really stiff and I'd rather him have stiff knees than loose ones, but they both have double joints. They both do have swivel in the shin, which I'm not a fan of, but it does help with posing. They do have a ball hinge in the ankle, so they can bend their foot up and down, swivel at the foot, and you can even get that to rotate and give them a really good rocker ankle. So overall, really good detailing, really good articulation on these two. So what we're going to do now is take a little break, get them posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And here we have Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias posed for my final thoughts. Overall, I really do like the way this set came out. I would have preferred if they did come with accessories. I really feel like the DC Essentials line could use accessories with their figures, either alternate heads, alternate hands, or just something to go with them, because they do seem really static, and they really don't have too many posabilities when it comes to accessories or anything like that. However, the posability on these guys is fantastic. Just like with the other DC Essentials, these are a really nice set, and I really am happy to have these guys in my collection. 
I was lucky enough to get mine from my local comic book store. So huge shout out to Asylum Comics for getting this out to me so I could review it to you guys. If you are looking for this set, it is going to run you about $50 at your local comic book store. And if you're a fan of the Watchmen or a fan of the Doomsday Clock series, it is ongoing right now. You're going to want to have these guys in your collection. Or if you're just a fan of the Watchmen and you want these classic costumes. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other action figure reviews, as well as all my other DC collectible videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments, and if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.